or I've listened twice to Dr. Martin Lloyd Jones's uh, what is it, preachers and preaching when when he actually did the lectures. Listening to the lectures that he did, wow. that, where that book yeah. came from, uh, yeah. and he at one point talked about how he said a couple of things that I thought were over the kind of overboard. I love ninety nine point nine percent of it, but he said um, the pastor sh- should never be friends with his congregation. Mm friends with people in the congregation. Mm. Any thoughts on that? Mm. I disagree totally. <laughs> I think what it, what's wiser to say is there's a real danger in friendship of getting hurt deeply, of hurting others deeply, of showing favoritism and gravitating to some people over others. Uh, I think it's important to be wise and how you navigate those friendships but i don't know how you can't be a friend (laughs) yeah Uh, i I think it's essential jesus is our lord and god but he's also our friend i I don't know how you can can be different yeah it i i not having that really fresh in my mind i don't remember the the specifics of all of that but you know i know that um Obviously, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, we belong to the same family, uh, and that should mean that our relationships with people in our congregations should be rich and warm and meaningful and honest and caring. Um, I find it helpful uh, to make sure that there are boundaries, um, uh, that, uh, for instance, I, I'm careful with boundaries with women in particular, uh, that I don't, I don't violate, um, uh, certain, uh, boundaries, uh, for, to protect them and to protect myself. Uh, you know, I think with men, maybe the, the boundaries are, are somewhat different than that, but I think, uh, as, as men who serve the Lord, you know, there's that, that, there's that balance of always pointing people to Christ. You know, I, I love, Phillips Brooks quote, uh, the, the 19th century preacher, uh, who said, you know, a pastor's job is to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. And that can be a really difficult balance sometimes in helping, uh, people where we, we don't allow our relationships to, uh, become more prominent than our call to serve the Lord and point people to Christ. I think that always has to be the primary thing. And I think if, I think we have very deep and very close relationships, but I think we have to make sure that we realize that God has entrusted us with a special call to serve him and to serve his kingdom, where there'll be times that we will just make people angry um, because we're being faithful to the living God. That's really hard sometimes. Uh, but I think that, to me, that's where I want to make sure that I'm really careful in, in how that I deal with folks uh, in, in churches. I think that's truth that's good for all friendships, though. And I agree, I agree with everything you said. It is. And we all know about pastors who run off with secretaries yeah. or this or that yeah. or the other thing. But it's also true that this world needs people who can show how you can be a friend and that you can have friendships and not be afraid of them. Right. And That's Tim, true you, too. you've lost a close friend in ministry and I've had some stab me in the back and, and I've lost friends because I didn't officiate their daughter's wedding because she was marrying a non-believer or whatever it may be. We're going to lose friends. We're going to make friends. How, how can you meet a brother or sister in Christ who's passionate for the Lord and not feel an instant friendship with them. Uh, yeah. uh, it, it's, <laughs> I yeah. don't know how you stop that. So yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it, the, the bottom line is just always wisdom in those friendships. Yeah. Yeah, I found it strange. Um, John, you went through a list of things. I forget what they were, but uh, as you were going through, I thought one of the descriptions 
for, for relationships, relate, for them to be, well, I keep wanting to use the word real, for it to be real, I don't know, how can I not be real friends to brothers and sisters in the congregation? Uh, right. You know, am I supposed to pull back and it's just kind of a vocational hands-off uh, distance kind of thing? That's, that's just what I kind of battle with, but you guys have been very helpful for me to think that through. Well, it sounds like we're limiting our love. We're only going to let it go so far because I might get hurt or I might hurt you. That's the risk you take in love, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the first thing love is, it's long suffering. We're going to hurt each other. Yeah. It, it may be too that one of the things that, that Lloyd Jones is really pointing to was uh, the danger with uh, friendship moving into the place where we don't hold people accountable. We move away from uh, genuinely loving somebody mm -hmm. to sort of dismissing things. You know, there, there are some uh, denominations where, where you look at the do denomination and it's more of a family. And that's not all bad, but the problem is if you've got a weird Uncle Al um, he's always going to be your weird Uncle Al. You're going to love him and you're going to care for him, but you might let Uncle Al get away with all kinds of stuff that Uncle Al shouldn't get away with in the kingdom of God. And so it's finding that friendship that is accountable and loving. And but, that, but that's where it stops being friendship and becomes politics because faithful are the wounds of a friend. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But yeah, it does happen. It does. Happen. It does. It I does. have felt the temptation to to bend a little more toward breaking instead of bending. Yeah, uh, I yeah. felt that temptation. But at the end of the day, you, it's still a choice you got to make. Are you going to be a friend? Be yeah. a friend, or try to keep one. And yeah. yeah, it's more important to be one. Right. Amen. All right, very good. I told you guys an hour, and I want to be faithful to that, man. This has been good. We maybe try to do this. Uh, more often, I I'd love it. Miss sure. you guys dearly. Miss you. Yeah, miss you. Yeah, this is good. Miss both you guys. This is great. I, I I'm not a over sentimental person, but when I see you guys, my eyes messed up a little bit because yeah. the Lord the Lord used you to get me through some tough. I've I've had yeah. tough times in every church, but the church in Indiana was especially challenging. So I'm grateful for how God brought you as friend. Where would I be without your friendship? I might not be in the ministry today. So thank God for you. Amen. Thank you. Thank the Lord for you guys. Amen. I agree. Amen. Let me pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for so many blessings, such a diversity of blessings that you pour out. And one of them is uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, friendships that are there that are uh, at different levels, but always um, have that sweet because of the kindred um, love for you. And uh, Father, thank you so much for these two guys here. Pray that you continue to bless them, keep them strong. Uh, we do plead for your wisdom in every um, decision that has to be made uh, as, as these guys just keep pouring it out and always been a helpful uh, to me to think things through. So I thank you for that. And I pray that you continue to bless them mightily. Surprise us all today with just your incredible, faithful work through sinners like us. Yeah. And we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I love you guys. Love you, too. love you all too. All right. I'm going to put an end to it. All right. Okay. Love you. All right. All right. <laughs> God bless. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.